My name is Cole, and this is my 1967 Mooney M20C. I met up with Cole and his Mooney aircraft in Denton, Texas. Mooney's are known for their iconic tails, speed, and efficiency. The Mooney Aircraft Company was founded by Albert Mooney in 1929, but quickly succumbed to the Great Depression. It was reincorporated in 1948 and began producing aircraft. The company ran into financial troubles in 2008 and shut down production. The company was purchased by a Chinese developer in 2013. In 2020, the company was purchased by a group of Mooney owners and pilots. It's unknown what the future holds for Mooney Aircraft. Let's talk to Cole and learn more about his Mooney M20C. My wife and kids and I moved here. Um, I was doing something else. Uh, my dad's a pool builder, so I've done his pool designs for like the last eight years, still do them. And one morning I woke up and I just kind of had the bug to want to learn to fly. Uh, but I was actually nervous to talk to my wife about it. Yeah. Um, and so I talked to her uh, a couple days later and then she actually said that she had thought the same thing for me, but she was afraid to bring it up because uh, she was like, you know, that's a big career change. We had a good family friend. He's been a pilot for as long as we've known him. He's actually a Czech airman for American Airlines. And so it just kind of worked out. Uh, I called that friend and he put me in contact with uh, Tom Tweedale over here in Hidden Valley. I rented Tom's Cherokee and I would go fly with Tom and then I also flew with um, an instructor, Kevin. And so Kevin it was kind of my main instructor, but I did about half of my private with Kevin, half with Tom. and. Uh, that's kind of what got me into it. I wasn't really sure if I was going to be pursuing it for a career. Uh, I know that I am now. At the time, it just felt like the next step in life, um, the next pursuit. And like I had no idea that I would end up buying this plane at that point, um, you know, flying around in a little Cherokee 140. I knew I liked to fly, but I didn't really know what was going to come of it. And I think near halfway through my private, that's when I kind of decided like, you know, this, I really do feel like this is the trajectory of my life. And so uh, that's kind of when I started looking for my own plane. Uh, this is a Mooney M20C, uh, Mark 21 as they call it. Uh, this is a 1967 model. Uh, so it's got the uh, kind of the rectangular back windows. If you look at some of the earlier C models, they have like a swooped. Uh, window. So it's got a Lycoming uh, 180 horsepower, just normally aspirated uh, carbureted engine. Uh, so it's one of the, uh, it's one of the slower Moonies, <laughs> as they say. Uh, everyone who sees this thing thinks that it flies 200 miles an hour. It doesn't. Uh, usually uh, true airspeed, depending on what I'm doing. Uh, if I'm, you know, low and slow and just cruised out, you know, 130 miles an hour. If I'm throttle down, trying to get somewhere fast, you know, 155, 160 miles an hour. For what I was looking for, uh, it was the perfect uh, plane for what I was trying to accomplish. Uh, so for fuel efficiency on this thing, normal cruise, uh, I'll see seven or eight gallons an hour. Uh, if I really lean it out and I'm just solo time building, I've gotten it under six. Um, and I've done that on multiple trips, so I know it wasn't just a fluke. But if I've got a couple of people with me, then, you know, seven, eight, maybe nine, but they are very efficient for what you're getting. I mean, when I used to fly the Cherokee, I'd average eight gallons an hour with the true airspeed of like 110 to 115. In this thing, I can get that same fuel burn going 40, 50 miles an hour faster at times. Oh, I mean, I've done the math. My wife and I were, like I said, we're from California and we've flown to California probably three or four times in this plane. And I've done the math. It's equally as fuel efficient to fly my plane as it is to drive her uh, Explorer. And we do it in seven or eight hours versus 22 hours. So it's, it's, a, it's a much better way to go as long as it's not turbulent across New Mexico. It's kind of corny. Uh, I really fell in love with the Mooney. The first time I ever saw one, I was doing, um, I was doing the King School online um, private pilot, you know, ground school. And John King was talking about as you get further in your aviation journey, you'll fly bigger, faster, better planes. And I remember he said, you know, something along the lines of, you know, maybe, maybe you want to go fly something like this. And I think the camera like panned out real far from the plane. And he just said, it's a Mooney. With me as your instructor, you're about to fly at the controls of your own personal airplane. And I saw, I just saw the side of the plane. I saw the iconic tail, uh, the rudder, and I just, I fell in love right then and there. I was like, I want one of those. I knew nothing about their efficiency, nothing about their speed. 
that's all I knew is I saw how, I just thought it thing looked really pretty. Uh, and so that was what started me out on really liking them. I'm a flight instructor, I've got my CFII. Uh, I have not yet done multi-engine, that'll probably be my next step. I'm looking at a couple of flight schools in the area. Now that I'm nearing a thousand hours of total time, I'm trying to get that on lockdown just because I know that uh, if I am gonna go to the airlines, multi is gonna be required with a certain amount of hours. Uh, so that'll probably be my next step, but for now I'm just flying and training. For people in the DFW area, if they're looking for complex uh, time, complex endorsements, I mean, I train in this thing. Uh, you have to at least have your private pilot um, for me to train you in my plane, but if you're if you're looking for that, I mean, I, uh, I have my little custom logo I made with uh, the uh, Mooney, the old school Mooney logo, uh, my, my flight school, I guess if you could call it, is uh, Vitamin CFI. I have an email address, a lot of it's word of mouth. Um, people come into the hangar here at Denton and uh, they see my cards in the shop and uh, Austin that I trained, he's in there all the time. So people ask and uh, they'll see this thing inevitably in the hangar. So anyhow. All right, uh, you ready to go fly this thing? Absolutely, You're definitely ready to go fly. The plan for the day was to take off out of Denton Enterprise Airport, a quick loop, and back around to land there. The thing I always heard on the Moonies is, you know, a little bit narrower cabin, I guess. Well, what's funny, too, about them is, I think window to window, uh -huh. they're as wide as a 172, but because of the cut in here, yeah. I think that's what makes them feel tighter. Three times or so, how cold it is. Clear! Enterprise Airport. Automated weather observation 1453 Zulu. Wind 140 at 03. Visibility 10. Sky condition clear. Temperature minus 04 Celsius. Dew point minus 08 Celsius. Altimeter 3035. So you got your engine monitor there, I mean, so I guess it just reads like the EGT on the highest cylinder or what? So it's got, um, technically, I can see all the EGTs, but yeah, it's going to give me on this screen, it'll just give me the highest. Right. But yeah, the CGR30s are kind of nice because you can uh, monitor all that. Plus, I mean, fuel flow and uh, yeah. total time. I think it's pretty important to have a graphical engine monitor. I mean, it, it's, you know, you, you can, or one, you can lean out a lot better. You can take better care of the engine. Yep. Yeah, and I mean, when I did my annual in September, there was an issue with um, one of the mags. The timing was slightly off, and I could feel it. But I could not only feel it, I could see it in my CHTs, and I told my mechanic, and um, he kind of troubleshooted, troubleshot, whatever, troubleshooted through a few things, and uh, finally they found out that it was, it was the mag timing was just slightly advanced, and it was throwing things off, so they retimed it, and then everything was back to normal. Um, Dead ground, Mooney 9689 Mike at Kilo, short of Bravo, with the numbers ready to taxi. Mooney 6896, stand ground runway 18 left, taxi via Bravo and Alpha. All right, 18 left via Bravo Alpha, 9689 Mike. You said you've put 800 hours on this thing since February? Yeah, eight, eight to long, I think. Yeah, that's yeah, a I've, lot. I've flown it all over. I mean, it's a blast to fly. One day I just got up super early uh, and I flew straight to Green Bay, Wisconsin. Wow. And straight back that day just to go time build. Yeah. Um, and it's amazing to be able to do that in a, like, to be able to fly from Green Bay, Wisconsin, all the way back to Denton on one tank of gas yeah. is just, I mean, technically, you know, two, both, yeah, yeah, two, yeah. two tanks, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. right. I'm going to need to warm this engine up a little bit more before I do my prop, um, check, but I'll do my, uh, bags while I'm at it. Like they recommend letting the oil temperature get up around 100 before you do the prop uh, check. I'll check my uh, car boot while I'm at it though. Uh, going up. Good. Oi. Alright bro. Departure, talk to you soon. 332. 
Dead Tower, Mooney 9689 Mike, holding short of 1 8 left, requesting departure to the west. Mooney 9689 Mike, Dead Tower, hold short, 1 8 left. Hold short, 8 9 Mike. Mooney 89 Mike, 1 8 left, clear for takeoff, westbound. 1 8 left, clear for takeoff, westbound. Mooney 89 Mike. Hello. How's work? Alright, uh, ask 6654, contact departure for 1841. Contact departure for 6654. Fast tower, Aztec 153, Leo Mike is number one for runway 18 left. Aztec 153, Leo Mike, the entire hold short, 18 left. Hold short, runway 18 left. Let's have a little fun. Is that manual gear or is it a hydraulic? Uh, it's manual. Manual, wow. Yeah, the old the old Moonies. I like it. I mean, it takes it takes a little bit to get the hang of it. Yeah. Most people when they first try it out, um, they really struggle because you have to push this button in before you pull the handle down. Yeah. And there's a little bit of like a clear takeoff, southwest out. There's a little bit of a finesse in pushing the handle forward while you do it yeah and so but once you get the hang of it then you can pretty much just Good eyes out that's pretty nice and comfortable up here yeah it's not bad yeah yeah the seats are that's comfy for the back. size of the plane left. yeah not a bad day at all. Really beautiful. No, pretty nice, nice smooth up here anyway. Yeah, for now. So now you can, now you can, uh, so you and your wife and then the two kids, uh, everybody fits in that pretty well. What can you do, like four adults in here and carry fuel or what? Um, I've done four adults, uh, never with baggage, yeah. but um, I had to I had to burn off a bit of fuel before doing so. My yeah. useful load in this thing's 960, which is pretty high for some of the older Moonies. Yeah. But even then, I mean, I hold, you know, 50 plus gallons of fuel plus four adults, like pretty soon, you're, unless your adults are all very small adults. Yeah, you run out of... Yeah. And so, like, when I did the flight to Michigan uh, that I told you about with my brother and my dad, uh, we could run full fuel, but my brother and I only brought a backpack yeah. and my dad brought like a backpack and then like a small carry on. Yeah. And so, and I like stripped everything else out of the back. Like my little oil container I took out, like I was really, like we were right on the precipice of <laughs> max <laughs> gross <laughs> weight. Yeah. So, but it was a lot of fun. So my wife and kids and I, we've had this thing pretty much full, full fuel, the four of us and then the back compartment, you know, hundred pounds of baggage. Yeah. And um, you know, took off out of the Grand Canyon. Yeah. So, so you normally run uh, what kind of RPM you run on this cruising? When I cruise it out, uh, if I'm with my wife and kids, 2,500 RPMs and pretty much max manifold pressure that it can take. Yeah. I mean, obviously not oversped. Uh, when I'm solo, anywhere from 16 and a half to 18 on the manifold pressure and usually 2,300 RPMs. And then for just basic, you know, flying around. Often 20 to 21, 2300 RPM. Yeah, so we're doing 130 knots almost. Is that no 110 100, knots? Yeah, uh, 130 miles an hour. Yeah, and doing uh, what? What you got a fuel? Yeah, fuel flow on that. Well, I haven't leaned it out yet. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, yeah, I'll probably be at our altitude now, only at 2500 feet. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it'd be a lot better still, if you're higher. Yeah, I'll probably still be seven or eight though. That's yeah, eight, eight right there. Yeah. So, I mean, and like I said, I've got it pulled back, not even a ton. But yeah pulled back enough to where, to me, you know, 135, 140 true airspeed while doing, you know, yeah, seven, seven and a half. Yep, seven yeah. and a half gallons an hour isn't that bad. And yeah. so, yeah, it's a fun, fun plane. So you do have autopilot on this? Uh, I do. I'm not running it right now, but yeah. it's just a simple s -Tech 30. Um, I can either track it to, uh, let me do this real quick. Um, I can either track it to my GPS, uh, uh -huh. or I can track it to my VOR, uh, or I can just track it to the heading. Like a heading bug. Yeah. Um, 
it's nice. It's it doesn't have altitude like capturing, so I can hold it at whatever altitude I want. Right. But I can't exactly. That's all you need. I mean, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, that's nice for a long cross country. I mean, like you know, you, you're doing an hour or something like that. Hand flying is great, but yeah. if you're doing you know all the way to Oshkosh or something. Yeah. I mean, you kind of nice, want to just have autopilot. Yeah, but this thing cruises out pretty nice. Like I've, you know, at this point I've barely touched the yoke. We're holding around 2,500 feet. Yeah. Uh, just low, and, you know, slow, but yeah. it trims out pretty nice. Yeah, I would say because you don't have the autopilot on, but it's holding everything pretty good. So. Yeah. Yeah, nice. At first, it takes a it takes a minute because the because the Mooney tail, the entire thing trims. Um, trying to really dial in the the trim can be a little bit of a task. Like I hate to say, I kind of feel like I got a little lucky with how quick I trimmed this thing out because there's some days where I feel like it takes me five or ten minutes to really trim it out yeah. because it is pretty sensitive but I always like the low wing I prefer a low wing better than than a high wing I, just, I, I like the visibility of it yeah I've only got one hour in a high wing and yeah. it was when I did spin training before I got my yeah. CFI and I remember, um, I remember just, I mean, I hate saying it because, I mean, I know people love Cessnas and, I mean, I, they make a great plane. I'm not going to say they don't, but uh, the Mooney controls are all push rods, so everything is immediate and instant. Yeah. Uh, and not only that, but it's sensitive. Like, I mean, my yoke deflection, I, I guess I could show you on the ground, but this is everything. Yeah. And so when I got in the Cessna, and even when I used to fly the Cherokee 140, I mean, they're both pulleys and cables. And yeah. Everything felt so sluggish to me. Yeah. And uh, I remember telling uh, the girl who did my spin training with me, I just said, man, I really don't like flying this plane. Yeah. Uh, it feels, I feel behind the plane even though I'm in front of the plane. Yeah. Because I feel like I'm being react, I'm reacting to everything. And I can't proactively fly this plane into this thing because it's so immediate. I feel like it's, once you get the hang of the mooning, I feel like it's so easy to stay ahead of the plane. Well, pl plus, you know, anything you're doing spin training in is probably a little sloppy anyway. <laughs> yeah. So you'll have, you know, 500 hour, another 500 hours in six months or something here. Are you going to, I mean, you need to get that multi, number one. Yep. And then, uh, so, I mean, sometime next year, are you looking, are you going to, you have to do it, you have to wait till you have the 1500 before you can start applying? Uh, you can apply sooner. A lot of, a lot of airlines, from what I've heard, they'll give you an interview uh, before you hit 1500 if they see that you're on top, like you're progress of how much you've been flying yeah. puts you within a few months of being there and so my plan is to try to get multi sometime between a thousand and twelve hundred hours I want to try to do it in the next month or two but between a thousand twelve hundred and then right after I get my multi uh, start applying at places yeah. uh, I may need to get some more multi time before they'll actually hire me but at least try to get in the door Man, uh, I've heard that they're they're taking anybody though I mean they, they need them so bad then I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean as long as you know, uh, you don't have to hold have to hold a lot of multi as long as you have it, and then you know you haven't failed check rides or anything no. too much. You know, so yeah, I've uh, thankfully I passed every check ride I've done yeah. at this point. Yeah. Dead Tower Mooney nine six eight nine Mike eight miles uh, to the west, requesting a full stop. Mooney eight nine six eight nine Mike Dead Tower reports the tracks in three eighty for one eight left. Well, we'll report the tracks in uh, three eighty for one eight left. Eight nine Mike. Yeah. Left will be number two, following a twin Cessna. On the, uh, three and a half. Was that for eight and a mic? Hey, from continue right base, one eight left, you'll be number two, flying a twin Cessna at your eleven o'clock three months. All right, we'll look for that Cessna and we'll continue for right base for one eight left, eight and a mic. Nine uh, mic, you can turn towards the numbers, one eight left, clear left. Turn it towards the numbers for one eight left, clear land, eight and a mic. Yeah, we'll contact ground, twenty three ninety five. Yeah, we'll be left out. Five Locked over to ground, loaded. five over ten, So what kind of approach speed do you do on this? Um, depends on if I'm flaps or no flaps, but usually uh, on final I'm around 80 to 85. Okay. Yeah. I just saw a deer down there. It's funny, just yesterday when I was on my way to the airport, uh, down this road over here, a group of deer um, went running across the road into the field, probably, I'd say five or six of them. Yep. All, they all looked pretty young. Um, Alright, gums check, good, good, good. Alright. Doc 73784 Denton. Pull short 18 left, uh, 73784, and that was a north eastbound departure, sorry. 
It's hydraulic flaps. Yep. Okay. Which people seem to love or hate. I love them because, man, if I had an electrical failure. Yeah, you can still do them. It's real nice to know. Your manual gear and hydraulic flaps. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That worst case scenario, I can still get this thing on the ground. Oh, yeah, greased it on. Yeah. Nice job. I often get off there, but uh, I would have had to slam the brakes to do it today. Eh. All right, well, Cole, thank you so much for uh, taking me up, man. Absolutely. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun flying with you. Cool airplane, and I guess you'll be at the airlines in no time. Yeah, that's the game plan. <laughs> All right, man, cool. thanks. We'll yeah. do it again. Absolutely. Thank you guys for watching. Please click that like and subscribe button, and uh, we'll, I'm going to film another airplane right now, so be sure to do it. Be sure to click that subscribe button to get notified when we post our next video. And introducing channel memberships. There are several levels to choose from. You can get perks like early access to videos and full-length unedited flight videos.